an artist was working on the roof of a church in Werden, Germany, and his, his safety strap broke. Now the church was surrounded by, by sharp rocks and stones, big boulders. But fortunately, there was, a, there was a lamb who was feeding on the grass that was growing between, between these terribly sharp rocks. And the artist miraculously fell right on top of the lamb. Now the lamb was smashed, crushed, destroyed. But the artist lived. And fittingly, he proceeded to, to sculpt the image of a lamb and, and he placed it on the roof of the church. And, and I'm told that you can still see that statue of a lamb on top of that church in, in Werden, Germany. Now that lamb in that story had no choice. He didn't choose to lay down his life for the artist. But we hear about the Lamb in today's Gospel passage. The Lamb of God who would choose to lay down His life for you and me. In this, the conclusion of St. John's Gospel, we have more than a hint, a glimmer, of how the story ends. Which is good for us as we begin this season of discipleship to know what's going to happen. What's coming. Just with that term, the Lamb of God, people's ears would have perked up. It was a code word packed with meaning. For example, 600 years before the birth of Christ, before that first Christmas. The prophet Isaiah, after he tells us that this servant would be a light to the nations, says these words. Who would believe what we have heard? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom men hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed, for our sins upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted not and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. He is wounded for our sins, bruised for our iniquities, taken upon himself the chastisement that makes us whole. This, this is how John the Baptist saw Jesus and how those who would have heard that description, behold the Lamb of God, would have recalled these words from Isaiah. The image of the Lamb as a sacrificial offering was like the air that the Israelites breathe. Twice a day, every morning and night in the temple, they, they sacrificed a lamb as a sin offering. They knew that ultimately God forgave their sins. And that who could possibly atone, take our punishment on himself? At the Passover, the great historian of antiquity, Josephus, said that at Passover, over 256,500 lambs were sacrificed in the temple. 
A lamb could be for a group, a family of, of 10 people. Multiply that by 10. That's how many people converged in the ancient world on Jerusalem to celebrate the per- first Passover. And yet, they all anticipated the coming of a new Moses, a new lawgiver. They all anticipated God's anointed one, the fulfillment of the prophet of the promise to King David that an heir would spring up, the true son of God. They were anticipating the Savior, the one who would lay down his life for his people. And John points him out. What's seen in code in today's gospel passage is explicitly spoken of in the book of Revelation. We find that that it is this one, and this one alone, the Lamb, as if slain, who can break open the seals, the seven seals on the scroll of God's plan for salvation. And in the book of Revelation, we're explicitly told God's plan for us that we become one body with him, enter into a communion of life. For in the vision to John, he sees the mass. He sees the heavenly reality in the mass as heaven embracing earth. He sees it as a wedding feast between the lamb and his spotless bride, the church. And so as we begin this season of discipleship, the church in its wisdom, places before us the end game, what's coming, that that we are preparing in our discipleship to enter into a deeper communion with him. His plan is is to reverse the order of, of the brokenness of our world. But we had all gone our own way like sheep. And he comes back to restore us to show us what sacrificial love is. As we receive the Eucharist today in this Mass, we know that we repeat those words. We refer to Jesus more than five times as as the Lamb of God. May our eyes be open. May we follow him, not like the Lamb under the roof in the church and word in Germany, but but rather the Lamb who loves us so much that, that he chose. He chose to lay down his life for us.